Exercise 13. Stockton Company issues four-year bonds with a $50,000 par value on June 1, 2011 at a price of $47,350. The annual contract rate is 7% and interest is paid semi-annually on November 30th and May 31st. We're asked to prepare an amortization table for these bonds using the straight line method. On June 1, 2011, the bonds sell for $47,350. This is an initial discount of $2,650. And we know that at the end of the bond's life, May 31st, 2015, the unamortized discount needs to be zero so that the carrying value is equal to the par value, $50,000. Using the straight line method, this movement toward the par value is at an equal dollar amount per period. So if we take $2,650 and divide it by the eight periods, the carrying value will increase by $331 per period. We amortize the discount by a constant dollar amount, $331 per period. So on November 30, 2011, we reduce the unamortized discount by 331 to 2319. This increases the carrying value to 47681 2319 minus 331 is 1988 the carrying value is up to 48,012. November 30th, 2012, 1,988 minus 331 is 1,657. The carrying value is 48,343. May 31st, 2013, 1,657 minus 331 is 1,326. The carrying value increases by 331. November 30th, 2013, 1326 minus 331 is 995, bringing the carrying value up to 49,005. May 31, 2014, 995 minus 331 is 664. The carrying value is 49,336. November 30, 2014, 664 minus 331 is 333, bringing the carrying value up to 49,667. And in order to get from an unamortized discount of 333 to zero, the amortization in the final period is $333 to accommodate the rounding. Remember the unamortized discount has to be zero at the end of the bond's term and the carrying value must equal par value. Requirement two asks us to record the first two interest payments and to accrue the interest as of December 31st, 2011. On November 30th, 2011, we debit bond interest expense. We're going to increase the carrying value of a liability, which we accomplish by crediting discount on bonds payable for $331. $2,650 divided by 8 was our periodic amortization of $331. And credit cash for the par value of $50,000 multiplied by 7% divided by 2, $1,750. Bond interest expense for six months is $2,081. Since we're using the straight line method, the dollar amounts remain constant. Bond interest expense is $2,081 every six months for the entire term. On December 31st, we need to accrue the interest. And basically what we're going to do is to take one-sixth of the November 30th journal entry. Debit bond interest expense for one month one-sixth of 2,081, $347. We're going to increase the liability by one month by crediting discount on bonds payable for 331 divided by 6, $55. And the only difference is we're not going to credit cash on December 31st because our payment dates are November 30th and May 31st. We're going to accrue the interest and credit interest payable for one-sixth of the semi-annual payment, $292. Assuming no reversing entries are made, on May 31, 2012, we need the carrying value to be $48,012. We debit bond interest expense for the six months, 2081, minus the 347 that was already recorded for the first month ending December 31, 1734. Debit interest payable for the amount previously accrued, 
$292. Credit discount on bonds payable for six months, $331, minus the $55 that has already been recorded for the one month ended December 31st. Credit discount on bonds payable for $276 and credit cash for the semi-annual payment amount, 1750